The federal government today announced changes to its lockdown assistance plan, increasing income support from $500 to $600 a week. Now, business owners will also be able to claim a cash flow boost of $10,000 if you're a Sydney business closed due to lockdown. Now, the New South Wales Premier welcomed the announcement as the state continues to face lockdown conditions. What this does is give us peace of mind and a breather for everybody in that when you provide that economic support for individuals and businesses, it gives us the freedom to do what we need on the health side by asking everybody to respect the advice that we're providing, but also having that confidence um, not to leave the house unless you absolutely have to. Well, joining me tonight to discuss this and all the latest political news is Federal, La Federal Labor Senator for Victoria, Raf Ciccone. Raf, thanks so much for your time. I'm delighted you could join me on the Bolt Report. Good to see let's you, open up about this. Let's open up about this COVID package changes. They're important for New South Wales, but they haven't gone without criticism from the opposition, have they? Look, we've been calling for some form of support um, for the last couple of weeks. Um, from our point of view, it is good to see the government finally come to the table. Uh, there are millions of Australians who have been doing it really tough during the COVID pandemic and tens of thousands of small businesses uh, as well. Uh, what we wanted uh, was to have JobKeeper or JobKeeper-like um, support payments in place. Now, obviously, the announcement this afternoon has been welcomed by the opposition. Uh, but having said that, uh, it is interesting that it's taken the federal coalition government some weeks now uh, we've had silence from the Prime Minister um, and, and, the, and um, the Treasurer um, and today's announcement is just a reflection of, I guess, the chaos of the government. They don't really know what they are doing at the moment and they've had to rely on state premiers uh, to apply the pressure and show the leadership, uh, whether it's in Victoria or New South Wales, given the, the two states who have endured and, and suffered the most um, throughout this pandemic. And, my home state, Victoria, in Melbourne, we did it really tough in the last uh, last year with the lockdowns, um, and the government has been uh, having to play politics in trying to support people who need that support right now to put food on their table to pay those bills. And there are many small businesses, Corey, that have been doing it really tough and have been saying to me and to Rep, many others I'm, in Canberra, I'm, I'm with you. Why isn't the federal government? I agree doing with enough? you on this. Yeah, I, look, I agree with you on, on parts of this, right? And let me go back to what you said about the, the federal government being all over the place and not really knowing what they're doing. I don't think, quite frankly, that any government in Australia really knows what they're doing. There, there doesn't seem to be a long-term plan. They Something happens in the COVID space, they're forced to react, they overreact generally, and they're left sort of trying to play catch-up, and that's devastating people's lives. So what can we do to make this all more predictable? Well, we've set up this national cabinet process and one would think through that process um, that the premiers and the prime minister uh, would be working constructively for the betterment of our country, for our citizens, regardless of whether you live in Sydney or Melbourne or any other areas of, of Australia. At the end of the day, the whole concept of the national cabinet process was to make sure that all of these issues was, were discussed and there'd be at least some consistency. At the moment, uh, you know, we've got six or seven different jurisdictions doing all sorts of different things at the moment. And rightly, so, many small businesses and individuals are quite frustrated. 